Today we are going to talk about sales um, for startups, uh, the process of selling uh, to enterprise companies because even though a lot of startups have great products, a um, lot of them fail because they struggle to build a successful sales team. One of the main reasons for their failure is lack of exposure to world class sales methodologies and processes. Um, before we go ahead and explore um, you know, few areas where you know, uh, we could, uh, you know, build a, an excellent sales team. I would like to introduce myself. My name is Praveen. I'm the founder and CEO of Sonore Technologies. Sonore Technologies provides lead generation solutions that help startups identify and target new customers. Um, we help startups grow their business in India. Um, and, and we do it by filling their sales pipeline with qualified leads and uh, scheduling sales appointments with decision makers. That's what we do in a nutshell. Um, well, today, um, so today um, I'm going to talk about how to go about building a sales team and building a business model that will help you to go after these large enterprise level customers and sell your products or services to them. Um, so before I start, right, the most important thing that you need is a great product or a service because if you do not have it and you don't have a business model um, you cannot sell right however good you are in sales however great you are um, in marketing uh, product or service needs to be very strong and you need to have figured out how you're going to make money is there a market for this business so i'm assuming that you've already done that and you found that you 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 have you now have a great product or a service um, so now what is the next step uh, that you need to do um, so the first step is to identify your market. So when I say market is, okay, I now got a product, uh, I've, I've built the software, say for example, I've built a software which is on the cloud, I want to sell it. So whom do I sell it to, right? Uh, who's your market? Are, am I going to talk to enterprise customers, the large customers, the billion dollar companies? Or am I going to talk to mid-market customers, some guys who are in between? Um, you know, it could be you know, a few million dollars, they're hundred million dollars and above, they're not billion dollar companies, right? So when I talk about mid-market. Or are you going to focus on the SMB space? Because SMB space, especially in India, is, is a very huge market, it's a growing market. So do you want to go play the SMB game? So it's very important for you to figure it out as to which market are you going to target. And, and a lot of companies choose uh, initially to go after the SMB space, a lot of startups gain confidence, then they go to mid market and then they try to sell to enterprise customers, but there are, there are startups who directly go and talk to the big boys. Um, so once you've identified that, it's important to find out, okay, what is the industry? Say you, you've identified and you figured out, okay, I'm going to go start sell to enterprise customers to begin with. Now in enterprise customers, what vertical are you going to focus on, right? The next question is, hey, am I going to focus on financial services? Am I going to focus on media? Is it going to be consulting? Is it going to be technology, right? So, I mean, there's so many verticals and so many industries. Now, um, what, what you could do is you can have an, a broad brush approach where you can go after anyone that you think is, is a company or you can identify three to four verticals that, that, that you can focus on. Uh, because if you have that focus, it helps you build a value proposition for that industry and go after the market aggressively. So it's very critical to, to have a vertical focus. If you want to have a multiple vertical focus, limit it to three or four. Say you, you identified three or four verticals that you want to go after. The next step is to obviously build a company list because what happens is startups um, generally what they do is they read the economic times in the morning, they see a company and they just go after it, right? So that's not, that's one good way that's being very opportunistic, uh, but um, you know, uh, you know, you can get lucky and close a few deals. Um, but what's important is to identify, hey, no, I've got this market. I've, I've, I've decided I want to go after the enterprise market and I've decided I'm going to go after the technology space. Now, it's important to build a list of companies that you call it a target list, right? You know, which are my top 200 companies in this vertical, in these verticals that I would like to target, right? Which are my top 200 companies? Are they million dollar, billion dollar? These are the companies that I want to do business with. Once you do that, then you have a real strategy. You have a target list to go after, right? You know who are your customers. Very important. If you do not know who your customers are, then you cannot sell to them. Once you've done that, it becomes easier, right? Then it's, a, it's the next step is to really identify the decision makers. Say I've got 100 companies that I go after and I'm selling technology, who do I talk to? 
right? Do I talk to the CEO? Do I talk to the IT director? Do I talk to a manager level? Very important, right? And 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 traditionally, you know, a uh, lot of people suggest that you know you should go after you know you should go after an influencer. I mean, there are two kinds of people that you can talk to before that, right? You can talk to a decision maker or an influencer. A decision maker is a guy who has the budget, he has the power, generally a C-level guy, or or a, an influencer could be someone who does not have the budget or the ability to make decisions, but is someone who can influence the decision maker. So it's very important that you keep these two people happy, because traditionally you try to say, you know what, I would go after the decision maker, get the meeting, he's got the money, he's going to be. But a lot of people forget the role influencers play. Right? You might talk to a CIO and he might be very interested in your solution, but then, and if the IT director is not happy with it, or, or an IT manager is not happy with it, the CIO will not give you the nod. Very important to know the role of an influencer. Right? So you need to know who are the influencers in, in, in the companies that you're targeting, who are the decision makers, and treat them well. Right? Target them equally. Don't, don't differentiate. Right? Because both of them are very important. Now. Now we've, we've covered three things here, right? Just to summarize, now you know the market that you're going after, you know the vertical that you're going after, you built a list of companies, then you know the, who the decision makers are. Great, you know, you, you got the platform now, everything is great, right? Now, the next step is who's going to sell? You're a startup, right? And uh, generally what happens is uh, a lot of people try to um, outsource their sales or they try to bring in a senior guy from the industry. Now, although that can work out in certain situations, um, you know, at least in my point of view, I think a founder or a CEO should sell at least the first initial deals because if, if, you, are, if, you, are, if you own a company and you're unable to sell your own product, then you're really missing something. So it's at least for the first few deals, you know, however difficult it would be, whether you're a sales guy or not, push yourself to go attend those meetings because it will help you in two ways, right? The first way it will help you to understand how good your product is and how well it is received in the market. And, and secondly, most importantly, you're, you're building relationships with these decision makers. And you as a CEO are in front of customers, makes a statement to these guys, right? Instead of having someone, you know, whom you hire or outsource doing it for you. So my suggestion is, you know, as, as a startup, try to close the first few deals yourself. So when you say, when it comes to sales teams, I'm moving on quickly uh, in the interest of time, when it comes to sales deals, right, there are, now once you identify the companies and the decision makers you go after, there are two things that in sales is. The one, the first thing is you need a business development team, right? Who would go after the market and talk to these decision makers and get you meetings, right? And then the second one would be you yourself as a founder who would go attend those meetings and close deals, right? And as, as your business grows, you can obviously hire someone else who could do, do it for you, but initially you would do it. But yes, the first part of business development appointment setting, you can definitely outsource it or you can hire, you know, these BD guys who can, who can do it for you. I think that's, that's absolutely fine. Um, so always, and, and again, you know, initially, um, very, very important to, to have that list nailed out because if you don't, if you, that list isn't great, again, you're going to struggle. Now moving on, um, so say, you know, the platform is set, you got this great meeting, your business development guy has pitched your product, he's got a meeting with, say, a CIO of a large enterprise company that you want to do business with, and now you as a CEO, right, is meeting the decision maker face-to-face -face or you're having a telephonic meeting, say it's a meeting, right? So what is it that you tell him, right? So the, a lot of people don't realize that the first 10 to 15 seconds is very important, right? Your opening statement, what do you, you meet the person, say you're on the phone, what is it that you tell him? The first 10 seconds needs to be exciting, right? It needs to be something that captures their imagination and makes them feel excited to talk to you for the next 5, 10, 15 minutes. If you don't have a great opening statement, then you struggle. Right, a great open, opening statement could be, um, you know, it, it's, it's limited to your creativity, right? But you know, like for example, if you ask, if, if you ask me, you know, Sunore's opening statement, if you had to, if you had to ask me, hey, okay, Praveen, what do you guys do? I would say, hey, you know, we introduce you to your potential customers. Simple, right? Or we say, hey, we help you identify and target new customers, right? I mean, it's it's very simple and it's straightforward. Even a high school kid would be able to understand what we do. And then, of course, you know, when you have a good opening line, then then the next step is, is, you know, they would be like, wow, okay, what do you do? Can you tell me more, right? Then you go about an elevator pitch. Elevator pitch should be less than a minute. Uh, don't go with a 20-minute elevator pitch talking about how great your company is. Um, keep it very short. The first minute is important. So an opening statement is 10 to 15 seconds. Elevator pitch is probably less than a minute, right? So, you know, say 45, 50 seconds, wherein you briefly talk about 
what is an elevator pitch right i mean i mean you, you can go google it and find lots of information about an elevator pitch but my definition is you know talk about how you're different how what is it that you do differently what is the value that your customer is going to gain out of you right and instantly establish credibility because talk about your existing customers you know hey we work with xxx we help companies like X Y Z do these these things and talk about the your big clients if you have. But if you do not have, talk about something cool that you do which is very different and can help and can solve a business problem or a business pain, right? And keep it simple. Or, or, or it could be a simple introduction of what you do and what your business model is. Keep it straightforward. Right? That's very important. Once you've done that and keep it less than a minute as a rule, keep it less than a minute. Once you've done that, the next ten to fifteen minutes you don't talk, right? Um, because you introduced your company you got a great opening line the decision makers knows a little bit about you now it's all about building the relationship the next 15 minutes is only question right it's about asking intelligent questions building the relationship you need to do three things there the first thing that you need to do is try and break the ice right don't be like a robot a lot of people are like a robot trying to be very formal trying to use jargons like you know we help you create sustainable competitive advantage ecosystem and things like that right i mean it is very very boring right i think importantly it's very important to be human and and break the ice talk about your background try to understand the guy's background what he's done how he started up what what kind of business he does but i try to be try to do that once you've done that you've broken the ice then the other person is more open to listen to you right and you ask questions like you know hey how do you um, how do you do this you know imagine you're selling the technology you're selling cr and then you ask them, hey you know how do you what do you use crm today right or or how do you implement your sales force so you know, ask questions like that very important to do that once you've done that um then yes you you break a broken the ice then you try to find out their business need um so you know even before i proceed uh, there is a traditional wisdom which tells about in every meeting there needs to be four things which is identify business pain identify the decision maker identify time frame and identify budget now i would think that although that works great in most circumstances i think the world is changing now in the new age i would probably want to um you know make some corrections to that like for example the first wisdom says identify decision makers i would say identify decision makers and influencers no who are the guys involved in the business in their buying process right don't be don't just think the guy you are talking to a c level guy is a decision maker find out hey who else would be involved in the decision making would it would your it manager be involved would your would your director be involved can we get on a call can we talk to him very important to get the buy in from everyone so change identify decision maker from identify decision maker and influencer right make make those changes that's the new age then the second thing is you know identify budget i would never do that because uh, you know you're talking to an enterprise company and you're talking to a guy who's a c level exec if he didn't have budget he wouldn't be talking to you and and it it, it basically is 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 you know it kind of shows that you're very desperate and you're asking that question too early in the sales cycle don't ever do that i think budget whether they have a budget or not needs to be uncovered during during the sales cycle it will naturally come out when you're engaged in a sales cycle there is no need to explicitly ask hey do you have a budget don't do that right let it evolve let it naturally come about you know there will come during the point of your conversation and the sales cycle there will come a time when you can ask that question or they will tell you whether they have a budget or not so don't make it very obvious so i would say refrain from it as much as possible don't ask them right so the second thing is i mean again it's traditional wisdom is to ask it i would say you know it will come out right the third thing is they talk about time frames right uh, identify when they would be most likely to implement the product now again the challenge is i would say ask it but be very choosy about it right because sometimes you know you you're on the first meeting you, they don't even know what you offer and you're asking them hey you know what do you will you sign the deal in the next 3 months i mean that's you know you again show that you're very desperate and uh, robotic so don't ever do that i would say refer initially as a startup refrain from that question as well although you know all your uh, mba grads and and your vcs and angels might push you to do that i would say refrain from it um, you know don't ask questions like you know do you do you have a time frame will you sign the deal in 3 months 6 months don't do that again that will come naturally as you as you there might be certain situations where you know where if the situation permits and it leads to a situation where you need to ask it ask it but don't go with the plan of asking it uh, initially uh, let it evolve the third thing is they talk about business pains uh, don't ever ask that because if you have to go to a decision maker and ask him what is your business pain <laughs> then you really really upset him uh, 
uh, I would, I would, I would, I would probably say you need to identify it yourself by asking in questions in terms of how do you implement this, how do you manage it. By doing this, you know, use things like compelling business need instead of business pain. Right? Hey, your business. If I understand your business need is this. If I understand if someone could help you solve this problem, it will help you. Don't use the word pain. Right? I mean, it's. It, it, it's, it's, you know, a lot of, I, I've seen companies, I've seen CEOs go and say, you know, first, th first thing on the call, they ask them, hey, can you tell me what your pains are? I mean, how ridiculous that is and how funny that is. So don't do that, right? So, uh, so again, you know, um, be, 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 try to be, as it were, try to be normal and human, right? I think that that's where, uh, you know, you'll have a great sales cycle. I think, again, you know, just to summarize, you know, the, the business, try to find out the decision makers and influencers, try to identify what their business needs are, compelling business needs are, stay away from the time frame, try to find it out indirectly, whether they have a budget or not, or a time frame or not, try to find it indirectly, don't ask it directly, at least on the first call. Once you've done that, it's very important to engage in a sales cycle, right? And a lot of people, you have to be very aggressive, right? Identify next steps. Don't hang up the call or don't get out of the meeting without getting some kind of commitment from the decision maker that you're talking to, without identifying a next step. Because a lot of entrepreneurs go, they have a good jolly time, talk to them, say hi, how are you, and they come back. There is no next action item. You need to have a next action item. Ask them, hey, you know, what is the next step? Right? You can ask them. Right? You don't need to suggest, hey, what do you think would be the next step? And they will tell you. They will tell you, hey, why don't you send me your company profile? Or why don't you come and meet my IT director? Why don't you send me, do a demo for me, right? There could be anything, right? You know, people, they will suggest your next step, right? Or, or sometimes if they're not interested, they will tell you, hey, you know what? It was great meeting you. We do not have a need now. Why don't you call me in three months, right? So, you know, always try to find out what the next step is. Don't get out of that phone call or the meeting without getting um, a commitment from, from your customer as to what the next step is, right? Once you've done that, then you follow up, right? Sales is all about persistence. Um, you know, uh, a lot of people give up uh, when the customer says no. Um, trust me, you know, it's, sales is not about getting yeses, it's about converting no's to yeses. A great sales guy is someone who, who has the ability to convert the no's to yeses, right? And it's also not about identifying a business need, right? I mean, if the guy had a compelling business need which is uncontrollable, he would go buy, you know, he would, he would go buy, he would have bought the service. You know, he wouldn't be waiting someone for someone to come to his, his office and sell it to him, right? He would have purchased it long time back. So sometimes it's about creating a need as well. It's not just about identifying a need. There might be situations where, you know, people don't know what your product is. It could be something innovative. It could be something that doesn't exist in the market. They might not have, because they don't know what it is, they don't have a need. So when you tell them, you're creating that need. Right? It's also important to create that need. And, and, and again, human behavior, you know, people don't buy logically. Research has proved that, you know, they buy emotionally. So if you can create much excitement about your product, people will buy it. It's about creating that excitement, showing the energy, believing in your product. Those things are very important. Um, once you've engaged in a sales cycle, it's very important to follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up. Don't give up. Be very aggressive. Don't be intrusive. Don't send the decision maker 10 emails in a week and kind of annoy him. But but do it in a subtle way. Do, you know, there are always subtle ways where you, you drop him an email, you call him, say, hey, how are you doing? Connect him with LinkedIn, you know, um, things like those, right? Do, do things like those which are indirect and subtle so that the decision maker doesn't feel that he's forced, being forced into a decision and, and, and don't act desperate. Very important, right? Make a decision. At some point in time, you'll realize that this customer is not the right fit for you. Make a decision, give up and move on. Right? Because, you know, you'll be wasting a lot of time on unqualified opportunities. Not every person that you talk to is going to give you business, right? Very important to know that, right? It's about giving in enough effort from your side and seeing if it works. If it doesn't work, move on to the next one. And it's the judgment of when to let go, very important. Um, once you've done all those things, say a customer says, you engage in a sales cycle, you send the proposal, you negotiate, you close the deal, great, you're winning, then you're scaling and... As you got your first deal, you, you obviously the confidence will rub off on you and you'll be able to generate more deals, close more deals, build more relationships. But what also happens is, what about the customer that said no to you, right? You need to have a mechanism to stay in touch, stay engaged, right? Put them on your email list, send them an email every month, once in a month, you know, talk about, I mean, don't send them an email which is, you know, just a email which is it's a plain email talking about features right talk about benefits talk about invite them for a webinar you know send them send them something send them an invite for lunch do, do things which are very creative and interesting that might again capture their imagination don't be you know don't be just pushing them brochures 
which is again uh, could be could could not help you and again when talking about brochures uh, one last thing a lot of companies that i've seen use brochures which are 20 pages long with the, with 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 the 4mb 10mb sizes it will clog the inbox of your decision makers because most of the decision makers today are mobile they are on their iphone or on on their blackberry right and they don't have time so brochures should not be more than 3 pages as a rule the first page talks about your company and your product the second page talks about the benefits not features and advantages benefits because people like benefits they don't like features and advantages talks about how it can help them um the third page talks about your customers because they want to know put a case study talk about how you help the next customer right talk about case studies and 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 your customers three page less than a meg uh not more than a meg because it's 3mb 4mb i've seen you know brochures which are 20mb um size which is which is just not going to help you right keep it short and sweet even your emails should shouldn't be very long right it should be you know four five lines hits the point nails it um and that that's the way to go so i know i hope uh, this um uh, small uh this is just my you know um opinions and my learnings uh, these things have helped us tremendously scale our business uh, but i hope this uh, small session helps you uh, again there is no right way or wrong way to do sales uh, because if if sales was science and if you could do xyz things and if you could get customers we would all be billionaires um there is always a creative aspect to sales um you know you always figure your own way out you always make your own rules and you figure out your business model it's about trying new things and experimenting and then you fail and you learn new things uh, don't go by what others say or what traditional wisdom says be open to experimenting and trying new things um uh, that 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 is something that will help you increase sales and 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 one last thing building teams um once you're at a stage where you're scaling you got enough customers and you you want to hire people hire people with a lot of energy and a lot of passion uh, there is this traditional wisdom of getting people with experience who have 10 to 15 experience knows the market i would think that that works sometimes but nothing can beat uh, we've hired people who are freshers who are 2 3 years experience and they've done wonderful in sales and closed large deals and 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 you have people who are mbas who could go talk to a decision maker and close a technology sale right so it's it's not about it's not that you need to hire a 10 year or a 15 year old experience guy what matters is passion what matters is their ability to build relationships their communication skills and their understanding of your product so try to be open on that um and and experiment and figure out what way works best for you but very important to get people who believe in your vision and and get people um who could who could go and articulate your value proposition to your end customers so having said that i would like to conclude my session thank you um uh, for your time